Hi, Raz here, and I'd like to share with you a technique that I used in my latest project, Moving Castle, that you can see right here. This technique fits nicely with the November event that's running right now, and it's actually a node tree that allows you to add sand on tips of hair strands. As you can see in the render, I used this technique for the little bunny here. Uh, you can see some sand stamps on the legs area and we're going to recreate this effect in this video. Uh, before we begin, I just want to say that this is not a beginner's tutorial. You should have a basic understanding in using nodes and shaders in Blender, but of course I will explain my steps. Also, before we dive into uh, the shading process, please make sure you enable the Node Wrangler in the add-on section. I will be using it in the tutorial and I recommend you use it in your everyday work because it has many cool options and really useful. But the main thing I'm going to use in this tutorial is a control shift and left click on a node to view its result. I hope you enjoy it and if you did, please like and subscribe for more content in the future. Let's begin. So I created here a simple scene with a Suzanne model with a simple particle system, a hair system, and a simple hair uh, material. Okay, so before we get started using the nodes, let's think of what we actually want from this shader. So we want two things. First thing is we want uh, the sand to appear only on the bottom part of our model, and we want to be able to control uh, which part uh, is the bottom from here or from here. Okay, uh, so this is the first thing. Second thing is we want the sand to appear only on the tip of each strand and not all over the strand and we want to be able to control it too. Okay, so with these two things let's begin with the second um, which is easier. Okay, so to achieve this effect, let's add a hair info node. You can see uh, it has five outputs and we are going to use the intercept output. So let's see what it actually does. So what the intercept output in this node does, it turns each strand in the uh, particle system we have into a color ramp so that the root is black or value zero and the top is uh, white with a value of one. And we can play with this color ramp with a color ramp node if we connect it over here. Let's move it aside for a minute. We can move this and that. And now the white part is going to be the sand and the black part is going to be the original uh, color of our hair. So let's make it on the tip. So actually we can say we uh, finished with this part but color ramp is nice but it's not um, it doesn't have many options in it and we also cannot uh, play with its range. I mean it's, it is limited to a range of 0 and 1 and only to this um, uh, root and tip. We can't uh, do anything more. And also it is limited in the sense that we cannot um, plug anything to sockets of this maximum and minimum, which can be done using a map range node. Now this is, you can think of it of a more advanced uh, color ramp node. So if we move this aside and connect the intercept to the value and see what it does, it does nothing. We have the from minimum and from maximum. You can think of the from minimum as the black um, controller, just like in the color ramp, and the from max as the white. And the closer these values are, 
the sharper the um, transition is. So if we say 0.5 to 0.6, we can see it is a sharp transition. Like this. Let's skip it on 0 and 1. Now the two minimum and two maximum. Um, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it controls also this controls the black and this controls the white. As you can see, when you go down below one, below zero, which is what we wanted, you can also control uh, the location of the transition. And this, if you go uh, above one, it actually makes makes the white whiter, which is something we're going to use later as well. Okay, so let's play only with the from values now. Take this up. Now, if we take a color mix RGB and connect this result to the factor, now we can copy this blue, put it here as the original uh, color of our hair, and the white, the color 2, is going to be the sand color. Something like this. Now, as you can see, we can control everything using these values. We can set it to be on the tip of each strand, and we can also um, make the intensity higher. Okay, so this is the second part we wanted from the uh, shader. Now let's go to the first part, which is making it appear only on the bottom. As you can see, now it appears all over the uh, monkey. So how do we do this? Let's add in a texture coordinate. And let's see the object output. This is a representation of the x, y, and z um, coordinates of the object. Now it doesn't matter whether you rotate it. This is the local uh, coordinates of the object. Now we want only the bottom part, so this is the z axis. So let's add in a converter, uh, separate x, y, z. Cool, so now we see the x, y, and Z. Remember that everything that is white is going to be affected and everything that is black is not going to be affected. Okay, so, so now we have, uh, we can control the bottom and the top part of our model. How can we control it? Uh, using this object. So let's here add an empty call it um, height controller or anything you want and find it here height controller now you can select it and this magic happens when you move it the coordinates move with it when you rotate it the coordinates rotate also and you can scale it to control the intensity you're actually scale up and down the uh, coordinates themselves. Okay. With this, we can now add in a converter map node. Connect it here. Multiply. And multiply these two. As you can remember, this controls the sand on the tip. Amazing. Everything that is white in this node is affected, and everything that is black is going to be actually the original color. But now it's on the top. We're going to fix it just in a minute. Let's add a map range. 
a new map range and connect it here. Now we want now two things. We want to flip it on the z-axis, so the sand will be on the bottom. And also, as you can see now, that this line is very sharp. We want to add it uh, some uh, sand, sandish noise texture in order it to be like this instead of this straight line. So how do we do that? You can see on the map range that what controls this uh, line is the from minimum. When you move it, it moves with it. So we can add a uh, noise texture right here. Let's move it right here. And connect the factor socket into the from minimum. Now you can see that this line is no longer straight, it is distorted according to this noise texture and we can control the scale of it and the detail. Of course, uh, the more hair you have on the object, it, you can see the effect better because it, is, it would be denser. The roughness, distortion, it's going to affect your line. Okay, so another thing we wanted to do is to uh, flip it. Uh, this can be achieved very easily by uh, setting this from max from 1 to 0. Now it is flipped. But also something happened. It is shifted the line. Our line is shifted a bit uh, up. And that is because our noise texture, uh, I guess. So we just add in, in here a map mode, add, and voila. Actually, this value was x exactly what we needed, but you can control it just like you wish. And now, also, if we move the empty, this is just great. You can control also the noise texture this way. And now, if we look at our multiplied uh, result with the tip, we can see we have the effect of the sand tips. If we just make it on really on the tips, yep, like so. Only on the bottom part according to this noise texture and this part of the note tree. So we have this, we have this, two parts of our shader, we multiplied it, we added it, uh, we added in a mix, uh, mix uh, RGB node, now we can connect it to our principled hair BSDF. We can play with the intensity, of course. And just play around with the settings just as you wish. Now, another cool thing is that. If we want Susan to lie like this in the sand, and we look what happened, it always sticks to the uh, empty rotation. So we can rotate Susan just as we want, and it will be just like uh, the empty's rotation. So this was the technique I wanted to share with you. Hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something new. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more content. Thanks for watching.